Hey there guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I'd get back to my roots and review an old manual folks prime. This here is the Hanima Auto S 135mm f2.8 lens. This lens comes in the M42 screw mount so it's very easy and cheap to adapt with little adapters like this thing here. You can adapt it to Canon and Nikon bodies as well as all mirrorless bodies. This makes it a very good option for a lot of people, even people who don't use mirrorless cameras which is pretty cool. With it being a vintage lens it has strictly no autofocus and no gold contacts on the bottom here. That means that there's no EXIF data sent to the camera and it's just a lens, that's all it is. You have to look, enable release without lens or something else like that. Anyway, enough about the software, let's talk about the hardware. Yep, it's a 135mm lens with an aperture of f2.8. That makes it a fast telephoto prime. When you put it on a Nikon or Sony APS-C body, the full frame equivalent is just a little bit more than 200mm. On a Canon body, it's something more like 210 So, if you're used to shooting with a 70 to 200 on full frame, it's right at the end of that scale there. This it makes it easy to create out of focus backgrounds. I think pretty good for portrait work depending on how large your space is. There are also f3.5 and f2.5 versions of 135mm lenses out there but I think f2.8 is sort of the sweet spot. 135mm lenses were very popular back in the film era so there's a lot on the market. This means the prices are pretty much always low depending on what model you like to go for. As you can see here it's got a 55mm filter thread. It's the Hanima Auto S 135mm f2.8 and it's got a built-in lens hood which is pretty cool for one and also extremely handy since this lens has problems with flaring. Build quality of this lens is probably one of its best features. It's got an all metal construction and yeah just beautiful to look at. I've currently got an Albinar Auto Special 135mm f2.8 lens as well as a Vivitar Auto 135mm lens coming in the post as well. So if you would like me to do a comparison then please do leave that comment down below. This is what it looks like attached to my Sony NEX7. It's um, a pretty small and lightweight for a telephoto lens and that's why it has been a mainstay for my kit bag. This lens as well as the one you're shooting on right now and the 1855 have been my go-to bag and it's been a good combo to say the least. The aperture stops down by pressing this little button here but unfortunately the adapter doesn't touch that part and so the aperture never stops down with the adapter on. You might be able to find better adapters out there than this one um, but I never really found it. That wasn't really ever an issue for me though because I did love shooting wide open with this lens and it produces pretty nice images. 135mm is a good focal length for doing macro photos I've found. Unfortunately this lens only focuses as closely as 1.5 meters, which is um, a little bit lame. I would have preferred something closer to 1 meter. But thanks to the help of inexpensive adapters, we can adapt it to the Canon mount and then use macro extension tubes to extend the closest focusing distance to something quite a bit more usable. It does look quite long right now, but with a tripod, you can get some really good macro photos with it. Now, I've already talked about some of its strengths and weaknesses, but I haven't talked about all of them. Unfortunately, this lens, it might just be this lens, not all of them, but this lens is quite slow to focus, slow and methodical. It's a little bit hard to express it, but you just, you can't, you wouldn't be able to do sport photography on this lens, for example. Also, the chromatic aberrations are crazy on this, and I'll show you an example right now. This is the edited version after I like turned the sliders up to 20, and this is the original one. Now you can see what I mean, can't you? Usually it's pretty easy to edit out, which is why I continue to use this lens. But if you don't like to do lots of post-processing, that might be an issue for you. Also, the barrel extends while you focus. That can be an issue for some people using filters. But now that we've got that out of the way, I can show you the test photos that I've done, as well as a slew of photos and videos that I have shot on the lens. Enjoy.
So can I recommend this lens to the average consumer? Well, in a way, yes, um, because it's so darn cheap. It pro produces quite good images, and as long as you are happy to edit out a bit of chromatic aberrations here and there, and you can change your pace of shooting to suit how slow this thing focuses, then definitely yes. I've actually got some photos printed and framed and given to family um, from this lens so far, so I definitely like it. I'm looking forward to more multi-coated options from the other manufacturers in the future. But as it stands, yeah, I use this all the time. I love it and I hope that you grab one and love it too. I also hope that if you liked this video, you would leave me a comment, subscribe, turn on those notifications. And yeah, any questions, I'll try and answer them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.